Hey everybody, this is Kyle with the Bricktoe Security, and today we're continuing on the Hack the Box starting point series with the appointment box. Let's get going. All right, so I got a box up and running here. I'm gonna grab this IP. We're gonna see what we're working with, doing a sudo nmap, give it our IP, dash SV to see what version numbers we have. And let nmap run real quick. All right, nmap is done. It looks like we just have port 80 open, which is an HTTP page with an Apache server. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Firefox and we'll see what this web page has. And paste that in and it looks like we just have a basic uh, login page here, but there may be something else available. So I think we're going to do a directory enumeration for every subdomain that may be available from this web page. If you would like, go ahead and click on the link right here and you can look how we install GoBuster. I'm gonna assume you already have GoBuster installed. So I'm gonna put uh, GoBuster dir dash u, put in our IP address, and then put a word list in. But instead of using the dir word list, I'm gonna actually get something that's a little bit better. Going back into Firefox real quick, I'm gonna download something called Seclis. Seclis are a very good uh, word list group from uh, Daniel. Messler, and it's just a simple uh, install. With Kali, you might already have it previously installed, but just in case, I'm gonna open up another terminal right here. Control V, uh, sorry, I gotta run this as roots. Okay, so now I got Seclis installed. So now we go back into our other word page here. I'm gonna do, to define our word list with dash W, do user, share word list then i'm going to do seclis um after that i'm going to go into discovery and let's do web content here and let's do how about the directory list 2.3 small all right i'm gonna let that run real quick and i'll come back when it's done all right, while well, GoBuster is still running, let's actually go back in to Hack the Box here and start answering some of these questions. All right, what does the acronym SQL stand for, or what most people call it, which would be SQL? Uh, this stands for Structured Query Language. Now, what SQL actually is, is a relational database management system and basically just has a whole bunch of tables that we are able to both input, output, query, uh, and define whatever we would like to onto this database. If you take a look right here on your screen, you can see what a SQL database would look like. But knowing Hack the Box is looking for something with SQL might lead me to believe that we're looking for some kind of SQL vulnerability. So task two, it says, what is one of the most common type of SQL vulnerabilities? Well, if we would take a look here, I'm gonna bring this up. We can type in the OWASP top 10 list. And let's click on the first page and we can see everything that might possibly uh, be a typical vulnerability that we might find. If we take a look at this third one down here, we see A03-2021-injection. Now, if we were to click onto this here, we can kind of get just a general overview as to what we're looking at but most of the descriptions are something within the lines of us being able to map some kind of uh, hostile data or formatting within a particular database. We can see that we can include things like uh, LDAP, OS command lines, JSON, XML. Uh, if we keep scrolling down here, we can see that there are notes of SQL structures, such as table names, column names, and other things that may possibly be able to be escaped. So when we have some kind of injection check with SQL, we will call that SQL injection. What does PII stand for? PII stands for Personally Identifiable Information. Now, this is information that we'll find that is just associated with some kind of user that is within a system. This can be something like their full name, their social security, their address, their phone number, anything that can help identify you as being an individual that you are as the user. What does the OWASP top 10 list name the classification for this vulnerability? 
Well, we actually took a look at this. It was the A03 2021 dash injection. Let me copy that in. What service and version are running on port 80 of the target? So let's go back in to our terminal, scroll back to the top. We can see their version is Apache HTTPD 2.4.38 and it's Debian model. Place that in. What is the standard port used for the HTTPS protocol? Now the port for HTTP page is port 80, but if we're going to actually secure it, the standard port is 443. What is one luck-based method of exploiting login pages? Well, a luck-based method is usually just a guess and check model. What if we're going to just guess and check everything that we have possibly available to us? We're going to be brute forcing it. What is a folder called in web application terminology? Now that is a directory. And it's the same idea as if you're on a Windows machine or Linux, whenever you click on a folder, you're just going through all the different directories. What response code is given for not found errors? Well, if you've been on the internet for any point in time, you know that those are 404 errors. And we can see that if we go back into Firefox here, let me type in something like google.com and then a whole bunch of gibberish after it. And looks right there, we have our 404 error. What switch do we use with GoBuster to specify we're looking to discover directories, not subdomains? Well, if we're looking for directories, we're gonna be looking in the DIR, which is short for directories. What symbol do we use to comment out parts of the code? Well, this is kind of dependent on what code you're using, but generally, most of the time, let me open up another terminal here. Um, I'm just going to uh, create something called uh, test. And I'm going to have it, oops, let me enter input mode. I'm gonna type echo and I'm gonna type hello. And I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna do a second one and do tap echo there. All right, so now, uh, let me chmod and make this executable. All right, now I'm going to do test. And it says hello and there. But if I press up, I'm going to vim this again. Now, if I go to the very beginning of this line and I put in a pound sign and I run it again, we're just now getting hello. The pound sign is actually what comments the actual line. It doesn't have any kind of executable value with it. So the answer for what symbol do we use to comment out parts of our code? That is the pound sign. All right, so now that we have answered most of the Hack the Box questions, let's go back in and actually start enumerating these new directories that GoBuster found for us. Let me scroll back down to the bottom. And we can see that GoBuster found us images, CSS, JS, vendor, and fonts. Um, we can go ahead and try this vendor page possibly. There may be something here. Okay, so uh, it looks like that we're actually able to go into each of these directories here um, and see what there is. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and JS is your JavaScript. These are just going to be like your different web page animations and their imagery and styles. CSS hamburgers. Uh, again, we're just looking at a whole bunch of CSS and JavaScript, it looks like. Select two. So nothing of serious high interest. Um, I can go ahead and explore the images. Maybe there's something that we could find there. Another whole page. Uh, it looks like we have one image of a skyscraper. Nothing of serious value. Uh, we have a favicon, which for this one's just their homepage. Again, nothing too exciting. Uh, I don't feel like I need to explore any of the CSS, JavaScript, or the fonts. So it doesn't look like there's actually any kind of directory info that we're going to find here. But if we go back in, we still do have this login page here. So what we can try to do is brute force 
and find a username and password or some kind of credentials that might work to be able to log in for us, maybe looking at the company's history or anything of that nature. But what we might also want to check for is any kind of vulnerabilities that might be on the page. So one thing that we can do actually is open up Burp Suite. So I'm going to open up another tab here, type in Burp Suite. Have that open up real quick. I'm just going to make it a temporary project right now. I'm going to grab this IP that we had. I'm going to open it and I'm going to go into our proxy. I'm going to open up a web browser so we can capture this HTTP history. I'm going to paste that in. So now I've loaded this page onto Chromium. If we click on HTTP history, we can see all the web pages that are being loaded onto it. All of them are coming from the same IP. But this is just our default language here. Now, if I turn on intercept, what I'm going to try to do is actually capture this login information. I'm going to type, hey there. So once I press enter onto the web page here, we are back within Burp Suite and the intercept of the proxy actually gave us the login page request that we're trying to get. Now, this is a post page that has two different parameters that there may possibly be some kind of vulnerability there. We have the username and the password page. So what I'm gonna do is actually take this page and send it out to another application that we will use called SQL map. In order to do that, I'm gonna empty out both of these parameter fields. So I'm gonna right click this and then I'm going to go to save item and I'm gonna save this as a rec.rec. .rec. You can name this anything you want, but it has to end in the .rec, which just stands for a request page. And I'm gonna save that. Let's hop back into terminal here. I'm gonna go into our second page and I'm going to type in SQL map and see what this is. Scroll to the top. What SQL map is, is just an automated detection application. To look for any kind of vulnerabilities in numerous different databases. So what you can actually specify is the URL that you are looking on, um, you can add any kind of data or cookie that you need to flag as well as increase the level and risk that you would have if you were more confident that you are allowed to be looking at. And once we get to the enumeration stage, we can uh, check all the different databases, the tables that they have, just dump everything all together, as well as specify the kind of data that may be available on the table or a column that we do find. So scrolling down to the bottom, I'm going to warn you that once we do actually run SQL map, it is going to take a while because it's not going to shoot out as many requests as it possibly can just for a detection level. So I'm going to type in SQL map dash R and then put our rec dot rec page and press enter here. And you're going to see it's going to have a lot of different requests that we're going through and it's going to start testing all the different blinds and error pages and anything that it may actually detect as a vulnerability. The first question we get here is a post parameter username appears to be a MySQL 5.0.12 with a time-based blind that is injectable. Do you want to skip test payload specific for other databases? Um, yeah, if you're confident in it, let's go ahead and do that. For the remaining tests, you want to include all tests for MySQL. Uh, yeah, we, we can go ahead and do that. Um, just keep the level and risk value the exact same. Uh, injection, not exploitable with null services. Do you want to try a random integer option? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we don't need to actually specify anything with like a union chart or anything of that nature. So go ahead and just send out uh, different random usernames that you think may actually work. Now I'm going to let this run for a second. Post parameter username is vulnerable. Do you want to keep testing to see if there is anything else? Well, once we already have our foothold into this, I, I don't think we actually need to go any further. So no, I, I don't think we need to go in. So it, SQL map was actually able to give us a payload that it used as what the vulnerability was. So um, do you want SQL map to try to optimize values for databases, delay responses? Yeah, yeah that's fine. 
and then it, it ended because we actually have our vulnerability found. Now, the good thing about SQL map is it'll actually retain all the information that it had from previous records. So if I were to run this again, it would say, hey, we already know that there's a vulnerability right here. So the next thing that I would like to do is see what kind of tables are available. So SQL map dash dash or SQL map dash R rec rec dash dash tables. Run that and now it's going to start enumerating. Uh, do you want to map to optimize values? Yep, go ahead and do that. So now what SQL map is going to do is take the payload that it found and then add one letter every single line just to see if we get a positive page back from it. If it does get a positive page, it knows that this is actually uh, a letter for our databases. So if it does I right here as our first example, it'll do I A nothing, B I B nothing, I C nothing. And it goes all the way down and has multiple, multiple page requests. So right now I'm just gonna let it do its thing and see what kind of tables actually come back. It looks like SQL map found one database of information schema, and now it's gonna run through each of these tables and try to fetch and see what information is there on that database. So far it has found users. I'm gonna go ahead and just let it keep searching. Again, it's gonna take a while. All right, I'm actually going to stop SQL map here. It looks like there's gonna be 76 uh, different tables that it's looking for. And this first one looks like it's about to say all plugins. I don't necessarily care about anything uh, down that far. So I'm gonna press control C. Now remember, it is going to retain any information that we had prior. So if we go and go a dash capital T and put in users, we can now see what is within this table. So I'm gonna do dash dash dump afterwards, and it's gonna rerun through the algorithm. Uh, yep, we can go ahead and optimize here so we can avoid as many disruptions as possible. And it's already starting to find some more information. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this from here because I think I already have the information that I know what I'm looking for. Um, we have our username and our passwords. So now that we've specified our table, let's specify our column and let's assign the username. Let's dump every username that we have again with dash dash dump. Now we're getting to the stuff that we're really, really looking for. Okay, so we have two users, one being admin and one being test. Now, if you remember, one of the columns was username and the other one was password. Okay, SQL map is finished and look how cool that is. Uh, it looks like we have our admin password as well as the te test password being ba ba ba. So if we go back into our web page here, we knew that admin was one of the usernames. Let's go back into SQL map and let's grab this extremely long password. Paste that back in. Congratulations, here is your flag. That's awesome. Go back in and answer the rest of these questions. Oh, we're all done. We just need the flag. So go back in. Let me copy that over. And we've completed appointment. Congratulations on completing the appointment box. I know these are going to start getting a little longer as we start getting more in depth and a little bit more challenging boxes. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Like the video. Appreciate y'all. See you next time.